Today we're going to look at the story of one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His name was Rafi' ibn Umayr al-Ta'i radiallahu anhu. And we'll look at the benefits and lessons from his story. Rafi' ibn Umayr al-Ta'i, he was a known thief before Islam. And they used to call him Da'mus al-Raml. Da'mus is a, a kind of worm that finds its path in the sand. So they nicknamed him because he knew his path through the desert like no one else. And they also used to call him Lissu al-Sahra, the thief of the desert. And he would only steal camels and only steal the best ones. Not just any camel, but quality camels. And he would steal alone. He didn't have a band of robbers or a gang of men with him. He worked completely alone. And he was never ever caught. And it was known that if he stole something from you, you completely give up hope because there's no way of finding it. Because he had a technique. He would take a lot of ostrich eggs, empty. He would fill them with water and go deep into the desert and he would hide them there. And he would go into the dangerous deserts that people know. There's no water and there's no way out. So they would never dare to go into them. And then he would choose his camel. And he would steal them and go deep into these dangerous deserts. Then when the people notice that they've been robbed, they start to follow the tracks of the camels. And then when they see that it's heading into this dangerous area and that no one comes out of this area except that he dies of thirst, they would give up and say this man is going to die anyways and they would turn back. And he would continue until the place where he hid the ostrich eggs and he would uncover them and he would drink and allow his animals to drink and then he would continue to wherever he wanted to go. So he never considered Islam. This entire time, until the ninth year after the Hijrah, when the Prophet ﷺ sent an army under Amr ibn al-As. And in this army, and Amr ibn al-As, what is interesting, he had only been Muslim for six months. And the Prophet ﷺ puts him in charge of an army, and the soldiers in the army were Abu Bakr and Umar. Every one of us would have put Abu Bakr in charge of that army. But the Prophet ﷺ puts someone who's only been Muslim for six months in charge of someone like Abu Bakr and someone like Umar and the rest of the companions. And if one thing you notice in the seerah, the Prophet ﷺ never ever once chose the wrong person to do the job. He always picks the perfect personality, the perfect person for that job. And he chose Amr ibn al-As, who made a lot of decisions that were strange during that battle. And they infuriated Umar. And he would come and complain to Abu Bakr. And then Abu Bakr stopped him. He told him, Ya Umar, had he not been better than you in this particular position, the Prophet ﷺ wouldn't have chose him over you. And then Umar calmed down. And when they went back to Medina, the Prophet ﷺ agreed with every single decision of Amr ibn al-As. So further proof that the Prophet ﷺ always chose the best man for the job. So they were supposed to trek across a very dangerous area of desert where there was no water. So Umar anhu suggested to the army and to the leader that we need to find a dalil, someone who knows the way, a guide who can guide us. And they told them no one knows the desert like Rafi' ibn Umair. And even though he was upon shirk at that time, they hired him and he went with them on the journey. And they spent obviously days together, days and nights. But he saw the companions and he saw their excellent, excellent mannerisms. He saw their characteristics. He saw that they were fair and just people. He saw how loving they were with each other and how kind they were with each other. So he immediately loved them. And that's the other lesson here. The effect, and we mentioned this a few weeks ago, the effect of good manners on people. If someone claims to have the best religion, but then when you deal with them and you observe them, they only display the worst of manners, the worst of etiquettes, then they will not be impressed and nobody would dare to or bother to even further investigate what is their belief system. But Rafi' radiallahu anhu, he saw their behavior, he saw how they were, 
and he saw their prayers at night and how they would recite the beautiful Quran and he, would saw, how, he saw how they would cry at night when they were doing their Qiyam and then during the day they were lions in battle. He says, I looked at all the companions of Muhammad وسلم, looking at their faces carefully and I chose one of them to be the one with the most khair and I walked up to him and that was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He says, I walked to Abu Bakr and I said, Ij'alni sahibuk. Make me your companion. Yani I, during this whole trip, I want to be with you. I camp next to you, sleep next to you. So Abu Bakr agreed immediately. He said he was so kind to me. He would, ma- he would make me sleep on his bed, yani whatever he would lay out. And he would give me from his clothing. And he was very gentle with me in his speech. And he would serve me. And he had never seen treatment like this before in his life. He said, when the mission was over, of course, I have to part ways with them. They're going to go back to Medina. I'll go back to where I'm from. He says, أَحْسَسْتُ أَنَّهُمْ سَيَغْدُونَ مَعَهُمْ قَلْبِي He said, I felt that when they leave, they're going to take my heart with them. These were the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. He couldn't stand the idea that he's going to be separate, like separated from them. That he wants to be with these people, these great men. He said, I felt that they're going to take my heart away with them. So he says, I went to Abu Bakr and I said, Ya Rafiq al Khair, O companion of good, inni tawassamtu, uh, aw, um, yani he says that, uh, he says, I have tawassamtuka wa akhtartuka, I have chosen you and I had a good feeling about you and I chose you, min bayni ashabik, from all, from amongst all your companions. How does one become like you? So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he says, you know your five fingers? He said, hold them up. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu told them the five pillars of Islam. Another da'wah benefit here. We always tell people when it comes to telling people about Islam, that you tell them about the five pillars. Some people want to get into multiple marriage and get into all kinds of issues and Palestine. Just the five pillars. What hold up the foundation of their Islam. So Abu Bakr went over the five pillars with him and... And then he says, did you memorize them? Did you learn them? And he says, naam. And let me, listen from me, let me say them back to you. He says, I bear witness there is, that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and his messenger. He says, salah, I will never leave it for the rest of my life. He said, zakah, if I have money, I will pay it. He says, Ramadan, I will fast as long as I'm alive. And hajj, if I'm able, I will make the journey, inshallah. So the thief of the desert became a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he remains a Muslim until the Khilafah of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr sends armies to Asham to fight the Romans. And they were victorious and they took a lot of land away from the Romans. So the Romans saw that these armies were too strong. So they asked for reinforcements. And they received reinforcements and their army came up to be 250,000 warriors. An army much greater and bigger in size than that of the Muslims. So, and, and they want to return the land that they lost to the Muslims. So the Muslim commanders sent immediately to al Madina to Abu Bakr the Khalifa. And they said, we need, they said, Al-Ghawth, Al-Ghawth, we need help, we need assistance. Al-ajal, al-ajal, like hurry, hurry, quickly, and we need assistance quickly. So Abu Bakr anhu sent to Khalid ibn Walid, who was leading other armies in Iraq. He sends to Khalid ibn Walid, and he tells him to immediately go as reinforcements to the armies in Asham. Khalid ibn Walid had an army of 10,000 warriors. Amongst them was our companion and our hero for today, Rafi' ibn Umair. And he, sends, he wants to get to Syria in the shortest amount of time possible. That army of a quarter of a million is approaching and they don't have time to take the safest and longest route to get there. So they want the shortest time possible. So he said, who knows the desert well? And they said, no one knows it better than Rafi' ibn Umair. He says, I want to get to Syria in the shortest time possible. So he tells him that there is a path, but it is a very difficult path. 
And, but they have to take this path in order to, when they reach Asham, they can join the Muslim army. Because if they take the regular path, the Roman army will be between them and the army they're trying to assist. How, so they have to get around and be on the other side of the Roman army. But this path is fast, it will take him to the right place, but it's extremely dangerous. They said that one man traveling by himself could barely make it through this path let alone an army of 10,000 with their horses that need to drink and everything else. So the, the other generals around Khalid bin Walid were concerned and they said that you're going to lead the believers to their death and you should not take this path. And then Khalid radiallahu anhu spoke to them and he spoke to them beautifully. He said, Ya ma'ashar al-Muslimin, la yakhtalifanna hadyukum. He says, basically, O oh, oh believers, don't separate in your thought, like have the same idea, have the same path. And do not let your certainty become weakened. And he said, No, that assistance from Allah comes in equal measure to your intention and your niya. Meaning he's saying, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when a slave turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with certainty in their heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to assist, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to help them, then the help will come to you at the same level of how much you trusted in Allah azza wa jal. And that's why his words are so powerful. And that is our next lesson. So trusting in Allah Azza wa Jal, and this similar to when the Prophet ﷺ said, "Ud'u Allaha wa antum muqinun bil ijaba." Ask Allah while you're certain of the response coming to you, not just oh, "I'm just doing what I have to do," or "Let's see what happens." But you're certain that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will respond. So He tells them, "Your assistance from Allah will come as much as you have your certainty in Allah." So. And then he says, and it is also Rafi' who is leading us. And no one knows a desert like Rafi'. So Rafi'a's plan, in short, he said, get me 20 of your, your healthiest but oldest camels. And then he made them drink a lot of water. And they, they report that the way he did that, he made them drink from this plant that was very salty. So after they ate from it, they instinctively went and filled themselves with water. And then he, he packed them with as much water as they could bear. And then they started to trek. And every day they would stop and he would slaughter, slaughter four of the camels. And he would take whatever water is in their bellies, mix it with their milk and give that to the horses. And whatever water was on their backs that he packed, he will give it to the soldiers. And then when they got to the fourth day, they ran out of all the water supply and everyone became thirsty. And on top of that, Rafi' radiallahu anh, his eyes were afflicted with something known as a ramad, where he couldn't open his eyes, so he couldn't see. Now the, the guide can't see. So Khalid tells him, what are we going to do? He says, look around carefully. There are two hills or two mountains that look a specific way. So he described them to him, and most mountains are jagged and have a peak at the top. He said, these two are rounded and they're next to each other. Khalid radiallahu anh, kept looking until he found them. He says, I can see them. He says, between them, there is a tree of Ausaj. Ausaj tree is known as desert thorn or Arabian box thorn. It's a very thorny kind of brush or it can grow up to a tree. He said there is a, a Ausaj tree between the two. So the companions went and looked. The soldiers were looking and they couldn't find it. So they came back to him and they said, we can't find him. He tells them, may Allah have mercy on you. The tree is there. And if you don't find it, you will die and I will die. You have to find it. He said, search every shibr, every handspan on the ground, search it. So they went and started to search and they found that the tree had actually been cut. But they still found the base there when they removed the sand. So they found it and they told him. He says, now dig right at the base of that tree. And they started to dig and they found a, a great amount of water from which they drank and all the horses drank and the army was saved through that action after Allah Azza wa Jal. Khalid bin Walid was so impressed by him. He said, how did you know this? How did you have this information? He said, Wallahi, I've only seen this tree once 30 years ago when I was traveling with my father. 
but his excellent memory, he remembered it, and he sensed when they were near it, even though he couldn't see, and he was able to save that army with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, and they were able to serve as reinforcements to the Muslim army, and they were victorious in that battle. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم من جميع الذنوب فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى for his forgiveness indeed those who ask for his forgiveness shall prosper الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد During that battle, رافع رضي الله عنه was given the standard as well of the army which is a great honor and after being known as Lis al-Sahra, the thief of the desert he actually became known as رافع الخير رافع الخير, الخير which is the good and he was given that name because of the care he had for poor people. They said that he would feed the community of three different masajid because the Muslim empire had grown at that point. Three, the communities of three different masajid, he would take care of feeding them completely. And it's famously known about him that he chose to have only one garment with him for the rest of his life. He would wear it at home and outside of the house because all the rest of his money was given to the poor. An excellent example of a companion of the Prophet An excellent example of the, the, the environment that they created when they were there through their good akhlaq and their good manners. And an excellent lesson for us to follow that excellent example. So we see this great change that happened in this man and this is what happens when someone believes in, or, or acts upon what they believe. And how he became from being known as the worst of the thieves to being the best of the people. With that, we ask Allah Azza wa to make us of those who recognize the truth as clear truth and follow the best of it, and to make us of those who recognize falsehood as clear falsehood and abstain from it. فاللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه فاللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا فاللهم أبرم لهذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويهدى فيه أهل معصيتك ويؤمر فيه بالمعروف وينهى فيه عن المنكر يا سميع الدعاء وصلى الله وبارك أن أبعث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقوموا إلى صلاتكم رحمكم الله طيب so uh, the announcements uh, another reminder please to Kindly donate to the masjid. You know, since the pandemic, the weekly donations have been down. You can do it here or online at the masjid.org. Sheikh Walid's class for tonight will be postponed and it will resume next week, inshallah. Youthful knowledge with myself will be, as usual, Saturdays at 6 30. Walking the journey with the Quran with Sister Ran and Mamluk for sisters will be Sunday at 2 p.m. And as usual, just please stay where you are until the volunteers let people out row by row.